Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. From Homestead Media, this is HHS In-Depth. Today is Thursday, February 15th, and welcome back to HHS In-Depth. Let's begin with a quick overview of today's show. We will start off our show with another update on our celebration of Black History Month with the first African-American news anchor. Then I'll bring you a story about why the Saks internet filter is in place and how it works. Finally, reporter Bryce Garrett brings us a story about a local student-owned car detailing service and how it's growing. You'll also get a weather report from Jaron Ellis and we'll bring you another edition of Behind the Curtain with Graham DeWitt. To close the show, you'll have a sports recap from Mar Nicholson and Down to the Wire. All this and more today on HHS In-Depth. Hello Spartans, welcome to HHS In Depth. I'm Emily Adams. And I'm Owen Kruger. And Emily, I was really enjoying those warmer temperatures we had last week. Me too, I was really enjoying some of that sunshine, but it is getting colder once more. I'm curious to see if we'll see any of those warm temps near the future. Weather reporter Jaron Ellis is in now to let us know what's to come for this weekend. Well, Emily and Owen, unfortunately, tomorrow and Saturday will be very cold outside. The good news, however, these temperatures will be some of the coldest we'll see for the foreseeable future. I'll be back later in the studio to tell you about the rest of our four-day weekend. Thanks, Jaron, for the update. I think I'll stay inside and enjoy my day off tomorrow. Jaron will be back later to let us know what we can expect for our upcoming four-day week. HHS In-Depth, National News. Switching now to national news, last week Las Vegas hosted the 58th Super Bowl that saw the Kansas City Chiefs overcoming the San Francisco 49ers to win 25-22 to in overtime. This makes the Chiefs back-to-back -back Super Bowl winners, a feat only done by five other teams in Super Bowl history. The halftime show was hosted by Usher, featuring famous artists such as Alicia Keys, Her, and Lil Jon. Taylor Swift made her guest appearance watching Travis Kelsey and met him on the sidelines after the win. In more important news, the 2024 Puppy Bowl took place as well last Sunday. Team Ruff triumphed over Team Fluff in a fun-filled game ending in a score of 72-69. to Ultimately, all the dogs were adopted after the game, making it a wholesome end to a fun game for the puppies. Thank you, Owen, for the national news update. Well, we turn now to our celebration of Black History Month where we get to honor and remember the important and impactful people of color in our nation's history. That's right, Owen. In this week's segment, we will showcase those who have had incredible impacts in today's society, as well as hear from some of our very own classmates at Homestead. Born in 1939, Max Robinson quickly rose to fame in the broadcasting industry. Robinson started his career at just 20 years old when he was hired to read the news at a station in Virginia. His face was hidden behind a graphic until one day when the cameraman told him to show his face. The next day, he was fired. He then moved to Washington where he worked as a TV reporter and later co-anchored the evening news at the city's most popular station. People would tune in just to see him and Max Robinson quickly became a household name. ABC News noticed him and he was moved to Chicago, where he was named one of just three co-anchors on World News Tonight. Robinson became the first person of color to anchor on the nightly news. Robinson used his platform to change the portrayal of black Americans in the media, and he mentored many young broadcasters. Remember to continue celebrating Black History Month and impactful people like Max Robinson and the achievements they made over the course of America's history.
I believe that Black History Month is a time where we can come together and learn about the achievements that America has made within itself. Even though Black History Month has a really dark past, I believe that it's a sense of importance and it needs to be talked about more within all schools, within all communities, within all walks of life. Black history is extremely important to what America is today and how we influence everything that America has. Black History Month just is really important. It's important for future generations and it's important for our generation to learn about because how will we succeed if we don't know our own history? That's something that I believe should be brought to light and brought into our own world. Black History Month does mean celebration and it means togetherness, but it also means encouragement and achievement. What Black History Month means to me, I feel that it's a time in the year where we get to acknowledge all the things that people of color who look like me have done. So many of the greats that we have throughout history, we get to sit down and think about them during this time. And although I personally believe that the entire year, like, I mean, Black history should be acknowledged, it's just, if we didn't have Black History Month, we probably would not acknowledge it as much as I hoped we should. And I feel like it's just a time where I feel acknowledged as a person of color and that we really do have a sense of community for people who look like me. A person who's influenced me a lot, or two people actually, is my mom and my godmom. They are both really strong, independent Black women that I look up to severely. They have taught me so much over the years. They've taught me how to be strong when I can't be, how to maneuver through the real world, how to express myself, how to just be myself. And my godmom has been really, really, like, I'm really grateful for her in a sense that she has pushed me. She's been pushing me in a really good way, and I think that encouragement has convinced me to be a person that I want to be and to be the woman that they are raising me up to be and to be satisfied with myself. Someone who is a person of color who has made a great impact in my life, while I could probably say so many different people, I would just have to kind of dial it down just to my family. So I have to thank my mom and my dad for raising me the way that I have. Then I feel like just one of my greatest inspirations would be my grandfather, Roosevelt Barnes. He has taught me so much in life, just, you know, just persevering and moving forward. He always tells me that we aspire for greatness. He's a trailblazer in his own right, working with Eugene Parker as one of the first few black sports agents in the industry. He's just an amazing person to look up to, and I can only hope to be just a fraction of all the things that he is and just an overall amazing human being who really looks out for our community. Make sure to tune into the show next week as we will have our final Black History Month segment to close out the month-long celebration. In almost every class, you have to use your computer to research a variety of topics on the internet. But I hate it when I can't access a page because it gets blocked. While that can be frustrating, there is a purposeful reason behind why the internet filter is in place. I met with the Sachs Educational Technology Services team to discuss why the filter was put in place for students and the teachers. So we actually receive um, funding from the government to pay for, you know, like our network and all different stuff like that. And part of receiving that funding, there's rules and laws in place that we have to have a content filter on all of the student devices and the network itself. So the name of it is Content Keeper. And the whole point of it is just to filter out what sites students and staff are able to get to and to make sure that the sites they are able to get to are appropriate for school. Aside from the obvious reasons of keeping students focused on their studies and away from harmful content, there also are security issues being addressed by Content Keeper. There's some different um, privacy laws that we're also bound to, the COPA, SIPA, and FERPA. Basically, 
it's protecting children on the internet and also protecting educational records. It's a big goal of ours is to make sure that there's not somebody trying to get that information and then harming students in some way. Evidently, there's so much more that goes into creating the internet filter than one might think. For one, there's a different filter for each educational level. So there's a Saks filter created for the elementary schools like Whispering Meadows and Covington, a middle school one for Summit and Woodside, and a high school one for Homestead, created especially for the needs of the students at that level. We um, take into account the different activities you, you are potentially doing at Homestead. You go to more news sites than maybe the middle school does because you're looking for different information as you do your work. We want to make sure that at Homestead, you have access to the things that, that you're doing there, which may be very different than what they're doing in kindergarten. So now that each school has its proper filter according to the academic level, how does Content Keeper actually pick out which websites stay and which get blocked? Well, it categorizes various websites into things like entertainment or media, and if something is deemed as harmful, it gets blocked by the Content Keeper. If you've ever had a site that worked yesterday, and then today it doesn't work, it's getting blocked. That's not because we blocked it all of a sudden, usually. It's likely that Content Keeper made a determination to change the category on that site. And so it fell into a different category and now it's blocked. And so the hard part is we don't get to decide what category some website is in. Definitely the goal is to make sure teachers have what they need and you guys have what you need. Overall, the people over at SETS are doing an amazing job making sure that students across the district are getting the electronic materials that they need and protecting us all from the potentially dangerous ones. Thanks for the story, Emily. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on HHS In Depth. Back to HHS in depth. Anyone interested in trying out for the Homestead Boys golf team needs to attend the call-up meeting on Monday, February 26th at 3:15 in the Gray Box. Coach Mazok will be delivering the tryout schedule and the expectations that will be necessary. The meeting will last less than 30 minutes, so please be prompt. Any girl interested in trying out for the Homestead tennis team needs to attend the player parent meeting on Wednesday, February 28th at 7 p.m. in the Gray Box. Please see Mr. Howard with any questions. There will be a call out meeting for anyone interested in joining Unified Track on Thursday, February 22nd, directly after school in room 310. Hey Emily, you drive to school, don't you? Yeah, I do, but my car has been getting really dirty from all the slush and salt on the roads from the winter. Lucky for you, Bryce Garrett brings us a story on how two Homestead students began a business detailing cars. Establishing a profitable and demanding business while still in high school is a unique accomplishment that only few students find success with. Recently, student Austin Handel started his company, Handel Car Detailing, to service the Fort Wayne area with both interior and exterior car detailing services. Uh, originally, it was a, like a lawn care service, like to mow lawns and stuff. I didn't really enjoy doing that, so I switched it up and kind of just looked at all the options and switched to car detailing. Although it sounds simple, there's more that goes into cleaning a car than many may think. So it's a full cleaning of the car. So we start off by vacuuming the car and then we do all the surfaces and then we do the, we do the seats and then we shine everything and put protectant over everything. And then for the outside, we foam the car and then we wax the car and then that's pretty much it. Following Austin's rapid success, he found himself hiring his first employee to the detailing team. We started getting like pretty overcrowded and I just need, knew that I needed another person. So Bennett was pretty trustworthy and I knew he could do a good job. So turning to him wasn't like a bad idea. I joined Handle Car Detailing because I was looking for a job where I could like it could be a flexible schedule and I could just work with my friends. It's just fun, you know, and it's it's 
nice to know that you can clean your car. Like, this will help me in the future, definitely. Given the heightened demand for Austin's car detailing services, he is reevaluating his future plans along with his business. So at the start, I kind of just wanted it to be like a side hustle. And then as it started growing, it's kind of like in the back of my mind to maybe just continue doing that after high school, get it registered as an official business, and then keep going from there. If you are interested in getting your car detailed this winter, contact Handle Car Detailing at the phone number shown below. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Bryce Garrett. Thank you, Bryce. We'll be back with more on HHS In Depth right after this. With the winter postseason well underway, two of our teams have ended their seasons, while one moves on into semi-state. I'll tell you all about it later in Down to the Wire. Welcome back to HHS In Depth. Welcome back to HHS In Depth. And Owen, I am so looking forward to our upcoming four day weekend. I'm looking forward to the downtime I have to myself, but I'm wondering if I'll be able to spend some of that time outside. Well, weather reporter Jaron Ellis is in now to let us know if that'll be a possibility. Thanks, Emily and Owen. I was hoping for a warm up next week, especially since this past week has been consistently on the cooler side, but unfortunately, these chilly chimps are here to stay for the foreseeable future. Today, with a high of 42 and a low of 26, will be one of the warmest days all week. However, with potential rain showers throughout the day, it may be best to stay indoors. As for this four day weekend, it will drop down to the 30s on Friday and Saturday with a high of 34 on both Saturday and Sunday, and temperatures dropping to the 20s at night. Be on the lookout on Friday afternoon as there will be a chance of snow showers. It may still be cold, but at least on Sunday and Monday, it will return to highs of 40s and sunny skies. Moving in the next week, temperatures stay constant throughout the week having temperatures return to the 30s. Starting on Tuesday was a high of 39 and Wednesday and Thursday both having a high of 38, with Thursday snow showers returning in the early morning. So you'll want to be cautious on the roads if you drive to school. We might not see any heat waves throughout the week, but we can be hopeful that spring-like temperatures will come sooner rather than later. Emily Owen, back to you. Thank you, Jaren. Well, even though it'll be a little colder, hopefully the performing arts teams in action this week will be able to stay warm. Joining us for another edition of Behind the Curtain is Graham DeWitt. Welcome back to Behind the Curtain. I'm Graham DeWitt. These past few weeks, our performing arts have been on stage in full force, giving us their all. So let's dive right in. The Homestead Show Choir groups competed at Carroll and Northridge this past weekend, with Royale receiving third runner-up at Carroll and both groups receiving grand champs at Northridge. Outstanding performers for Lee were Kennedy Knowles and Elena Baker, and outstanding performers for Royale were Braden Graff and Xavier Rowan. Not only was this a great start for the show choirs, but also for their backup band, Anonymous Blue, winning best backup band not once, not twice, but four times. On top of the best band awards, their choirs received awards for best choreography, best vocals, and best crew. Congrats on the amazing start of the season for both the choirs and backup band. They will be competing this Saturday at DeKalb. Show Choir wasn't the only group that had a successful weekend, as the Homestead Dance teams competed at Lake Central last weekend. With JV Hip Hop winning first with 78 points, JV Jazz winning first with 74.9 points, and Varsity Hip Hop and Varsity Jazz winning first runner-up with 79.33 and 79.13 points. The dance team will be hosting their own competition all day this Saturday at Homestead. Make sure to stop by and check out the amazingly talented groups this weekend. Likewise, the Homestead Winter Guard also had a very successful weekend as the varsity team placed third, surpassing competitors like Ben Davis and Greenwood, who are known for their amazing choreography and movements. The JV also did a great job putting on an incredible show. The jazz band also swept at the Snyder Jazz Competition this past weekend, winning first place in everything and completely dominating their competition. They received grand champs in Jazz 1, Jazz 2, and Jazz 1 combo. Fantastic job, jazz band, and we hope you have a super successful season. The new musical group Indoor Percussion begins their performance season this Saturday, February 17th at Carroll. 
They have been rehearsing on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for months. That's all for this week's edition of Behind the Curtain. If you have any scores, performances, or auditions, or anything else you would like to see on the show, reach out through the email address shown below. For Behind the Curtain, I'm Graham DeWitt. Emily, Owen, back to you. Thanks, Graham, and good luck to all the performers in action this weekend. Moving forward, let's take a look at what our Spartan athletes have been up to over the past week. Reporter Mara Nicholson is in now to let us know and down to the wire. Welcome back to Down to the Wire. I'm Mara Nicholson. We saw some incredible action from our teams, especially from those that are in their postseason. We begin with our girls basketball team who won their fifth regional title last Saturday. For this regional matchup, the girls traveled down to Marion High School to take on the McCutcheon Mavericks. After a close first half, the girls pulled away and won 51-34. Maya Epps had 15 points and 7 rebounds. Whitney Ankenbrook had 12 points and 2 rebounds. And Gabby Helsum had 8 points to go along with 6 rebounds. The girls will play at Lake Central at the Laporte Semi-State tomorrow morning. If they win that game, they will play the winner of Noblesville and Valparaiso for the semi-state title and the spot in the state championship. Going to our boys team, they got the win at Concordia last Friday, 54 to 47. Freshman sensation Jake Kuhlman had a career night, scoring 17 points. Alex Graber had 11 points and seven rebounds, and Josh Rogers had nine points. The boys also picked up a win at East Noble two days ago with a final score of 64 to 42. The boys play again tonight here against Carroll. Last Saturday, six of our boys on our wrestling team traveled to the Memorial Coliseum to compete in semi-state. After a tough match, the boys finished out on a very good season. Good luck next year. Finally, our girls swim and dive were also active on Saturday in their state competitions. The meet was highlighted by McCartley Mailer's 12th place finish in the 100 fly, along with Elle Hollingsworth placing 10th as an individual diver. Congratulations, girls. Tonight, our boys basketball team plays Carol at home. Tip-off will be at 7.30, and the theme is red for Riley. It will also be senior night for our boys, as well as our cheerleaders and our Homestead Live crew. Make sure to get out there to support our seniors and the kids at Red for Riley. That's all for this week's Down to the Wire. Thank you for watching. Emily, Owen, back to you. Thank you, Mara, for the sports update. This has been HHS In-Depth. Thank you for watching today. Make sure to check our socials for updates on the HHS ID team and our upcoming projects. Have a wonderful four-day weekend, Homestead, and we'll see you back here again next week.